I now hand the conference over to Mr. Krishna Bodhanapu. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Science Earnings Call for the second quarter of financial year FY21. I'm Krishna Bodhanapu, the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Science. Present with me on this call are our Executive Chairman, Dr. BVR Mohan Reddy, President and Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Rajay Agarwal, and President and Chief Operating Officer, Mr. Karthik Natarajan. Before we begin, I would like to mention that some of the statements made in today's discussion may be forward-looking in nature and may involve risks and uncertainty. <coughs> Sorry. A detailed statement in, this, statement in this regard is available on our investor update, which has been emailed to you and also is posted on our corporate website. This call will be accompanied by an earnings presentation. Details of the same have been shared with you. With this, let me first take you to the highlights for the quarter. We posted revenue of uh, INR 1003 million, that's uh, uh, 10,033 million, or 103, sorry, 1,003.3 crores. This signifies a growth of 1.2% on a Q on Q basis. In US dollar terms, we posted revenue of 135 million, which is a growth of 3.4% on a quarter on quarter basis and 1.3% on a constant currency basis. Services revenue stood at 114.1 million, which signifies a growth of 1.7% on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, and a slight degrowth on a constant currency. <coughs> EBIT, <coughs> excuse me. EBIT margin stood at 11% for the quarter, higher by 586 bits on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. Services EBIT is at 12.2% for the quarter, higher quarter-on-quarter -quarter by 542 bits, primarily from improvements in operational efficiency. DLM revenue, the design-led manufacturing revenue, for the quarter stood at 20.9 million, which is up by 13.3% on a sequential basis. The EBIT margin of DLM also stood at 4.7% for the quarter, which is higher by 926 bits quarter-on-quarter, -quarter, primarily because of the mix and the quality of revenue. Net profit for the quarter uh, stood at, 1, 000, uh, at uh, 839 million or 83.9 crores, which is a growth of 3% on a quarter on quarter basis. FCS is um, over 200 crores for the quarter and for the second consecutive uh, quarter, mainly driven by better collections, reduction in DSO by 10 days, tax and capex optimization. And I'd say this is, this is uh, a, a very significant achievement because this is in spite of the fact that in Q1 we had a government benefit with SEIS, which is not there in Q2. Uh, and, and that was a significant amount of, I think, about 35 uh, crores or so. Okay. Sorry, 52 crores or so. Uh, uh, which means that in spite of that, we still have done quite well on uh, cash collection. Free cash flow to EBITDA conversion now stands at 131.4% for the quarter. Coming to the business highlights of the quarter, uh, you may have seen a uh, announcement where uh, we announced the uh, intent to acquire uh, IG partners to strengthen our digital capabilities in the energy and mining industry. We believe mining is, a, is an interesting new um, uh, avenue for us where there is a fair amount of digital technologies that are being used. And IG partners uh, execution capability, uh, sorry, uh, IG partners uh, consulting and advisory and technology capability along with our digital capability gives us a unique uh, value proposition to our clients, which we will be able to um, uh, deliver to the mining industry. We have entered into a manufacturing collaboration with Audape to bring uh, world-class diagnostic capabilities to rural India. We will manufacture some key components of their uh, MISPA Countex uh, products. And uh, as, as you know, digital healthcare is becoming more prevalent, especially in a place like India, where there is a fair amount of uh, a need for digital healthcare and low-cost devices. We now have a very strong proposition for this market, um, along with the work that we do for some of the others, like uh, Mallbio, et cetera. With this transformation in uh, healthcare and with the prevalence of digital healthcare, we believe we're very well-placed to really accelerate our growth in that uh, particular market both with design and also with uh, manufacturing. We also are um, uh, certified as a gold status partner in the ESRI network. Uh, it's an important uh, aspect for our uh, um, uh, geospatial business and uh, also 
will significantly improve the pipeline of deals that come through because of this. Uh, Boeing uh, has, uh, for the, I think the eighth year or ninth year, has uh, acknowledged us as a silver performance partner, which is uh, an important testament to the work that we uh, do with, uh, with them. Uh, lastly, we're bringing all our sustainability and CSR initiatives together under one umbrella, uh, which is uh, the uh, <clears throat> under one umbrella, and the aim is to build synergies, optimize resources, and maximize the impact that we uh, that the Science Foundation will have to the outreach program. We are doing this through a uh, brand umbrella called Empowering Tomorrow Together. Uh, this is a play on our uh, brand promise of designing tomorrow together. So the Empowering Tomorrow Together initiative will cover our activities in the four focus areas of education, digital literacy, social innovation, and community development. Lastly, we strengthen the uh, board. Uh, Mr. Ramesh Abhishek, a retired Indian Administrative Services Officer of the 1982 batch, has joined our board. Uh, Mr. Abhishek has more than 32 years, uh, sorry, 37 years of uh, experience as one of the senior bureaucrats, and many of you may have also heard about him in the context of uh, Make in India, which was something that he spearheaded in launching, and uh, has been uh, incredibly helpful to us in understanding the intent and also helping us derive opportunities as more and more companies look at India as a viable manufacturing uh, location. With this, I would like to hand this call over to uh, Mr. Ajay Agarwal, who will take you through the detailed financial performance for the company. Ajay, over. Thank you, Krishna. Uh, as usual, I will take you through the revenues and the profitability and uh, cash flow. Uh, in terms of revenue, as Krishna already talked about, we delivered $135 million of revenue. Uh, the interesting part is uh, we have got uh, good uh, revenue in GLM, about 13.3% uh, quarter on quarter uh, growth. And uh, we believe that uh, uh, both in terms of the volume, the quality of revenue, and thus the margin, we have done very good performance in BLM, and that is something that is sustainable uh, over quarter three and uh, quarter four uh, as well. And uh, uh, in terms of uh, where the growth is coming from, Karthik will uh, give more color, but uh, primarily transport, communication, medical, these are the verticals uh, in services side which have uh, given us uh, uh, growth uh, uh, quarter on quarter. In terms of the margin, I, uh, as you would have uh, seen, we had an expansion of about 586 pips uh, quarter on quarter, uh, and we our margin is at about 11%. In terms of the services, our margin is 12.2. Uh, DLM is at about uh, 5%, uh, and you will see that you know uh, the uh, one of the headwinds we used to have on our overall group margin used to be the impact of DLM that's uh, coming down. That's only about uh, one percent now, and uh, as I said, it is sustainable. Uh, most of the uh, improvement in the efficiency has come down, uh, has come because of uh, the improvement in the operation matrix. You would see that you know our offshoring has improved by about three percent. Our utilization is also up by about three uh, percent. So I think those uh, two things together itself gives us about three three and a half percent of improvement. Uh, and you know we have been taking some initiatives over the period on cost reduction. So all of them are showing very nicely and still we have some investments that we have made uh, in quarter one and of course the impact uh, between the quarters keeps uh, changing. And also in terms of the uh, volume and uh, uh, absorption we are also getting benefit. So I would say that you know uh, the way we have managed the cost both on variable side and as well as on the fixed side, we have been able to uh, get to uh, a flat a bit uh, despite, uh, you know, especially year on year, if you see, uh, despite a uh, lot of challenges on the uh, volume side. Um, I'll just take uh, a minute to explain the margin bridge on the next one. Uh, you will be able to uh, see this. Uh, as I said, uh, the margin improvement you will find from the stable 327 bits, mostly from the operational matrix. Uh, there will be some uh, 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 headwinds uh, in quarter three. Uh, we have decided to give uh, the uh, height to the employees at the bottom of the pyramid, uh, about 8,000 odd people, which will be effective first October. That will have an impact of about uh, uh, 1%. Uh, also, quarter three typically has the mismatch between the billing days and the pay days. That also impacts by about uh, a percent. But then, of course, we also have some improvements that are possible. 
but marginally there may be a regrowth in uh, quarter three. But uh, again, I think there is uh, still room for improving the operational efficiencies uh, and other levels, and you will see that our exit margin uh, will be, uh, you know, uh, little uh, shade higher than uh, uh, the margin that we have delivered uh, here. So that's what we feel that you know whatever we have performed is something which is uh, sustainable, and we will deliver a robust margin at the exit of financial year 21, uh, which will become the basis for financial year uh, uh, 22. You would have observed uh, uh, we have uh, a good uh, cash generation during the quarter. Uh, the conversion is 132 percent. Uh, this is mainly coming from the reduction. Uh, if you see, of uh, you know the DSO movement itself has generated about 122 crores. That's a 10 days reduction. Uh, and uh, uh, also in terms of the cash position, we have a good position of uh, uh, 13,000 uh, one. 1,350.9 crores, uh, which gives us a good uh, room to be able to take our share of the investment uh, that we are working on uh, for fueling uh, the growth. Uh, I would also say that you know, apart from this, uh, there are initiatives on capex and tax optimization that we are working on. Capex, we have been able to. Uh, we are confident, you know, you would see the capex is considerably lower, and we can really peg capex at two and a half to three percent of the revenue. I also want to uh, uh, also reiterate that there is no change in our payout policy. While you have seen, we have not declared any uh, interim dividend, uh, but for the year we will uh, maintain our uh, payout policy of uh, 40 to 50 percent of the pack. This can be either in form of dividend uh, or buyback, and we will let you know as we finalize those uh, details during the year. Uh, with this, I pass on to uh, Karthik to give more insights around operations. Thanks, Ajay. Thanks, Krishna. And uh, as all of us uh, realized uh, three months ago, when we started looking at the market, we realized that many of our customers' uh, demand is getting contracted. They were facing liquidity crunch issues and supply chain disruption, and their costs were not in line. So they needed to rationalize on that. We also saw that the impact was heavy on asset-heavy industries, whether it is oil and gas, aviation, industrial, and transport, as compared to asset-light industries. Like technology and consumer, and with that backdrop, when you really look at it, our business performance for Q2 fiscal 21, I'm referring to the group uh, column against each of the business units and quarter on quarter performance. So aerospace and defense has shown about negative 10% uh, degrowth, and communication has uh, grown about 7.9%, and energy and utilities has been flat, and transportation, which is the rail transport part. Has grown about 21.3 percent quarter on quarter. Portfolio has done about 5.4 percent, and semiconductor has done uh, minus 2.3 percent. Medical technologies and healthcare has done about 49.4 percent. The key highlights that I would like to bring out is 3.4 percent quarter on quarter growth at constant currency of 1.3 percent. The key highlights would be the services uh, grew about 1.7 percent. The DLM business grew about 13.3 percent. And the key thing I also want to highlight about the order intake, which is about 127.3 million, has grown by 9% quarter on quarter, which is more of a leading indicator for what we are expected to do in the remainder of the year. In terms of improvement in margin, which is led by various operational metrics, whether it is about offshoring improvement up about 3.2%, and utilization has improved by about 4.5%, and also the subcontracting down by 8% quarter on quarter. All this contributed to our operational performance. I would also like to deep dive by each of the verticals that we operate in, just to give a color in terms of what we have seen so far and how are we looking at for the remainder of the year. So we talked about aerospace and defence, which continues to face uh, headwinds, and we hope Q3 or Q4 will be a bottoming quarter, and we are still uh, keeping a close tab on what is happening. The good news: last six, seven weeks has been uh, better than what we expected. We hope the same trend continues as we close 2020 and heading to 2021. We are still not getting clarity on how the budgets would pan out for 2021. In the normal course of years, we would have understood by this time how the budgets would uh, come up for the year to come. But in this extraordinary times, we are still going through uh, uh, final uh, uh, updates on their budgets. We will probably get to know around end of this uh, calendar year. 
communication which has seen a growth which is essentially driven by what we call them as uh, the rollout of broadband networks globally as well as the 5G network and uh, with virtual collaboration working from home probably increasing the bandwidth demand across both consumer as well as on the enterprises and that has essentially helped us to grow by 7.9 percent quarter on quarter and also interestingly to note is communication is our largest vertical as of Q2 2021. We are continuing to be positive on this vertical and as we start seeing significant investment around the network transformation and accelerated deployment of broadband and wireless infrastructure globally. Rail transportation which has seen uh, the star of the performers in uh, Q2 which has grown by 21 percent and what is driving this growth is essentially uh, most of the customers did not want to move their project closures to the right because the end users were government and they wanted to make sure that most of the projects are completed uh, on time and we needed to uh, ensure that we are able to meet the schedule and the time that is already agreed with them. So we were uh, almost in line with what is expected by our customers and we have seen a significant ramp up. We continue to remain positive for the next couple of quarters as we see them as a steady recovery on the rail and transport industry. And uh, in terms of energy and utility, we have seen the flat, flattish growth between last quarter to this quarter. And also want to highlight uh, what we are expecting uh, to see an upside with IG partners as the deal gets uh, approved during this quarter. And we expect to see a momentum on our digital transformation journey as well as growth in the mining industry as well. Medical uh, technologies and healthcare has seen the highest growth as compared to all other verticals, so it's small in terms of services. But if you also look at from uh, DLM, I think this has really picked up a uh, significant momentum in the last uh, three months. We continue to be bullish on the medical technologies. We also have added a new customer in this segment, which is amongst the top three uh, medical device manufacturers, and uh, we continue to be. Uh, positive about the medical technologies and healthcare business. Semiconductors have seen a mixed back and we won some deals. We also did not see the ramp up. We are seeing some delay in terms of customer decisions and we continue to uh, see softness in this vertical for the next couple of quarters. Portfolio business has witnessed a growth of 5.4% quarter on quarter and uh, along with ESRI gold partner status, Krishna talked about we continue to see momentum with uh, opportunities around energy and utilities and mining, defense, and public sector areas on the geospatial. DLM, which has seen the significant growth of 13.3%. One thing I want to add to this, we are very cautious in terms of ensuring that we are only driving the profitable growth in the segment. And this has been an issue that uh, we are aware of and we are very conscious of that and ensuring that we are able to uh, improve significantly in terms of inventory and we are also able to increase the cash flow for the business and we believe this is sustainable and we want to continue to be profitable in the segment and ensuring that the cash flows are intact. So with that we will probably uh, leave it for Q&A. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask questions may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking questions. Also, before we begin, we'd like to inform participants to please limit your questions to two per participant. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Sandeep Shah from Equitus Securities. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity and uh, congrats on a very strong margin execution. Uh, just the first question, uh, wanted to understand uh, 
how easy to now predict the growth in the aerospace and defense because uh, as we are saying q3 q4 may bottom out but uh, is it is it we believe the time has come where predictability has improved in this segment uh, both especially on the services side sure thanks uh, sandeep and this is still a big challenge for the whole industry right if you look at uh, still we have seen that only 25% of the travel has resumed as compared to what was seen same time last year so unless the travel uh, resumes it's a difficult one to predict how the industry would turn around there are various analysts who predict that by 2023 or late 22 is when uh, the industry is likely to recover so we are keeping a close tab on uh, both on the commercial aviation as well as on the defense side and as we have shared in the last call we are continuing to look at how do we grow our dlm business and defense business and the digital business within aerospace and defense and when we said we are bottoming out in q3 and q4 we hope the growth would compensate for by some of the directions that we are taking on the dlm and digital and that's the kind of uh, expectation that we have for the next two or three quarters i think uh, just to add to that i'd say uh, i think what the line of sight that we have is um uh you know from a volume perspective q3 seems to be holding up it's just that uh, we have a problem with the um, number of build days and and the capacity that's available so in that sense we believe that uh, we still have to address that problem in uh, q3 um therefore if we if we can uh, uh, maintain the volume which is what we have a line of sight to then we think at least q4 onwards some growth will uh, start to return but i think to karthik's point any appreciable growth uh, we're still a, a, a while away i don't think uh, any of the aerospace companies have a line of sight to any appreciable growth at the moment okay fair enough so in this scenario uh, looking at uh, aerospace defense still close to 30% of services segment uh, how do you look the growth outlook in the services segment uh, going forward in constant currency because uh, even in this quarter in pc term it has declined as a whole sadeep what i would really look at is that we have talked about communication has become our largest vertical so we are very confident on the growth that is going to come through the communication vertical and we are also looking at uh, the segments like transportation which will continue to do well and we are also bullish on the medical devices and uh, healthcare so these are the three segments we see that the growth is likely to be sustained in the near term and we hope the energy and utilities and the portfolio catch up soon and aerospace would be uh, as we said uh, you have to really wait and watch how this industry will pan out so this is the kind of uh, view that we have and what is driving that we have seen that momentum on the 5g rollout globally and the network transformation is definitely on the cards as the network demand has expanded by at least 15 to 18% on major markets that we operate in and this requires many customers to accelerate on the uh, rollout both on the broadband as well as on 5g so we are hopeful on that segment as compared to uh, what we have seen in the past and rail transport we have uh, seen a uh, secular growth across all our customers and that's the reason why we have seen uh, a 20% plus growth uh, from q1 to q2 and we still believe uh, this will have some more rough steam left for the next few quarters and uh, that's essentially what we are uh, planning for and medical which is uh, some part of medical has seen a growth and some part has not seen the growth depending on whether they are part of the pandemic related issues that we are addressing on diagnostics or any kind of hospitalization regulators and i think that part of the business has seen the growth in the last uh, six or seven months while the growth would probably be a lot more secular on the medical devices moving forward so that's the kind of color i can provide now. hello yes hello yes we can hear you yeah yeah just uh, so uh, looking at the tailwinds versus the headwinds uh, do you think services uh, segment can actually now start posting a positive growth uh, in the constant currency term in second half and uh, 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 krishna in your remarks you have said for the hello sorry i think sandeep just sandeep sorry you broke off when you started with the demand side session 
Yeah, so on the services side, looking at the tailwinds versus the headwinds segment wise, do you believe services segment can start posting a positive constant currency growth in the second half? And Krishna, your comment about the full year growth, uh, you expect a double digit decline versus last quarter you said 10 to 15 percent decline. So is it fair to say 10 to 15 percent range is now at a close to low double digit kind of a decline? Yeah, I think uh, that's that's fair to say. I think it's low double digit kind of a decline is what uh, we are looking at. And uh, I think, uh, you know, looking at your point about headwinds and tailwinds, I think net net, uh, we are quite uh, uh, positive around what's happening in the second quarter in most parts of our business. I think, uh, you know, there are positives, negatives, but overall net net will come out with, with being confident about growth. Uh, also taking into account what's happening in aerospace, I think we are, uh, you know, we still need to be cautious about that particular sector. But taking everything into account, I, I still feel that, or not I still feel, but I'd say I'm quite confident that we will have a much better H2 uh, compared to uh, H1 from uh, the uh, revenue perspective. Okay. And last question, if I can squeeze, uh, in terms of margin, I think uh, what uh, uh, the CFO is talking about in Q3, there could be some decline, but in Q4, we can be similar to Q3 margin, and the full year margin will be similar to last year margin of 9%. Is it the right? Yes, margin? yes, that is correct. Okay, uh, thanks, and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Urmil Shah from IDBI Capital Markets. Please go ahead. Yeah, I thanks for the opportunity. Uh, uh, Krishna first wanted to understand as regards the growth in uh, transportation in, in this uh, quarter, how much of it uh, would have been driven by uh, the new deal with uh, Itachi? Uh, uh, because, uh, you know, we have called out transportation as uh, one of the growth verticals. Uh, so, X of uh, the new deal, how uh, the performance has panned out? The new deal would have been relatively small because we're still in a ramp up mode. So a lot of the ramp up is really happening because of the uh, existing customers. Uh, we have Hitachi and we actually have one more new deal uh, in uh, transport, which are ramping up now. So what we therefore think is that, that uh, you know, the, uh, there's, there's decent growth that's coming back in the existing base. And then on top of this, the two, two new customers uh, will add to it for the coming quarter. So. Right now, at least, most of the growth would have been driven by uh, existing customers. Yeah, so you're talking about two new customers uh, in the coming quarter, in the second. No, no, they've, they've been already added, we're and already working with them. They will drive the growth in the coming quarter. Got it. And uh, just uh, the second question is, uh, uh, you know, again, the uh, outlook for FI21. Last quarter, uh, we had indicated that as regards the uh, 10 to 15 percent decline, we were more positive on DLM. Uh, now, uh, the outlook of a, a low double digit decline uh, is the outlook uh, for the DLM improved much uh, better than what it was last quarter, or it is driven by service. Uh, so DLM will grow faster than services. I think that is uh, quite clear now. And also, I think the, the, having said that, the, the good news is the uh, DLM margins will also continue to improve. We did 4.7% uh, a bit uh, this quarter, and we'll do a little bit, or we will continue to do better going forward. Uh, there will be more growth in DLM uh, and uh, at a better margin, but uh, it will be a mix of services and uh, DLM growth. It's not that uh, you know there will be a significant uh, uh, change to the uh, overall mix of how services in DLM will work. Sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mohit Jain from Arundhati. Please go ahead. Mr. Mohit Jain? From Anandati, you may go ahead with the question. Uh, there seems to be no response on the line of Mr. Mohit Jain. We'll move to the next question. The next question is from the line of Timshar Damodiwala from the Lal and Brocha Stockbroking. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, this is actually Mayank here from the Lal and Brocha. Uh, so, my question was regarding the 
the operation metrics improvement so uh, we can see that the head count uh, has reduced in the qu uh, quarter versus uh, the previous quarter also and the uh, same quarter last year also uh, how i wanted to understand how much of this uh, the, uh, salary direct salary and related cost reduction was due to offshoring and how much was because of uh, reduction in headcount if you could uh, help explain that so to ajay here uh, i would say that you know as i said that between the offshoring and utilization it's about uh, 3% improvement we see in half roughly you can say half 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 is because of uh, uh, offshoring and half is uh, because of utilization and also the optimization of cost in people in line okay thank you so that was about so that was my only question thank you before we take the next question a reminder to participants that you may press star and 1 to join the question queue the next question is from the line of mohit jain from anandrathi please go ahead uh mr mohit if you can hear us we can't hear you if you've muted your device please unmute it Uh, there seems to be no response on the line of Mr. Mohit Jain. Uh, we'll move to the next question. The next question is from the line of Zakir Nasser, who's an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, uh, good evening and uh, congratulations on a, a steady set of numbers. I would say for this quarter. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, number one, how is how is the work from home uh, situation panning out, and uh, does it entail a uh, higher expenditure then then when people come to office uh and ha ha i mean how 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 do you feel it will pan out and how is it panning out for time point number 2 is uh, about the um, the growth what mr krishna was mentioning uh, so uh, um what i can gather is on the console basis we we could see on a top line a deep growth of maybe around 10 to 11% would it be right sir thank you uh on the second one roughly uh, maybe i'd say uh, 10 might still be optimistic but roughly uh, you know we're we're closer to 10 rather than uh, 15 at this point uh on uh, work from home i last talked to transfer it given that you've done most of the work sure yeah no i think it's been a eventful quarter and uh, as we started learning to uh, uh operationalize the work from home i think we did see a lot of teething issues in the late part of q1 and early part of q2 and we are also able to stabilize in terms of productivity and uh, we are also seeing some cities we started uh, slowly moving to work from office by 10 15% but then we have to revert it uh, due to the changes that has happened on the pandemic so we have been able to manage productivity as well as on the health of our associates and we started focusing more on the mental health in the last three months we have been able to do many programs and ensuring that they are able to get their energy back since most of them are working remotely and we wanted to make sure that they see a common engagement across their own national uh, associates so a lot of emphasis on uh, morale of our uh, workforce and uh, helping them with uh, training and the training content and quality of training that we started providing to our associates had expanded significantly in q2 and we continue to see that gaining momentum in q3 and q4 as well so we are probably saying that we have learned how to manage work from home in the last 6 months and we are also fairly confident that we can continue this till the pandemic situation improves we are not rushing to get our associates back to uh, work from office and just to share some of the challenges we have seen due to the floods in the last two days we have been able to recover our operations within 2 to 4 hours of sla so this is not possible unless we have gone through uh, Uh, the last six months of learning and that has been uh, really put into use when we see any city that is likely to have an issue or any particular state will have an issue we know how to really manage uh, such uh, challenges we we'll see moving forward thank you thank you thank you before we take the next question a reminder to participants that you may press star and 1 to join the question queue The next question is from the line of Neerav Dalal from Maybank Kimang Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, 
Uh, thank you for the opportunity. I just had this uh, one question regarding the employee headcount. Uh, what would be the outlook going ahead? Uh, how should one look at that uh, number? Utilization has also improved. So, uh, your comments on that? I think we would be cautious about uh, headcount. I think we still have a little bit of room for uh, utilization. So we're looking at all the levers. I think uh, we, uh, uh, you know, I think the challenge that we created for ourselves was the uh, utilization numbers, and uh, we had a challenge with utilization that we're still trying to fix. So I would say that uh, we would, we are, uh, we're definitely recruiting for the quarter. Also, with uh, though the net headcount is negative, uh, we we are we've recruited uh, a, a bit of people this quarter. I think 270 people or so at a gross level at least. Uh, so we will continue to do that, but I wouldn't uh, expect to see a significant shift on headcount as yet because I think there are still some levers that we need to uh, uh, work on. And we also need to optimize the fact that there are, while uh, you know, the overall average number seems to be palatable, there's still some significant uh, areas where we need to improve. So we will focus on that. So at least um, for the next couple of quarters, I would say the growth wouldn't necessarily be driven by headcount because there's still enough slack in the system. Got that. No, because the other thing is that our utilizations are sort of, uh, you know, the highest that we've done. Uh, the last we had done a similar number was in FI12. So, uh, yeah, so just want uh, your take on that. So, how much more room is there on the utilization side? I think we have about 2% as well. I would say it's a combination of utilization plus the productivity and our ability to bring automation uh, to the fore. I think all combination of things that we are trying to track, we just thought about the headcount and the utilization, and it is also the productivity and how do you think we can maximize leveraging uh, the automation. I think that's the lever that we are trying to uh, put forward. Uh, you know. Got that, got that. Thank you, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. A reminder to participants that you may press star and one to join the question queue. The next question is from the line of Sandeep Shah from Equalist Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity again. Uh, Karthik, just a question in terms of uh, post you join, you were indicating that uh, you will do some restructuring efforts uh, both on the delivery as well as on the sales organization as a whole. So, where are you in that journey and is there any performance measurement uh, which you would like to share that uh, where are you in terms of the progress on those performance uh, measurement KPIs uh, that will help us uh, as a whole? Sure, uh, Sandeep, and we are going through the process uh, as we speak in this quarter. Probably we'll share more details by the time we do the next call. And as I started saying, we are definitely looking at uh, key levers from the revenue or growth standpoint with leading indicators like order intake, which is essentially part of the BBC, the booking, billing, and uh, collections. How do you think we really start uh, matching the complete order to cash? And from the operation standpoint, I think it's a typical uh, metrics which includes the key levers on utilization and how the automation and how do you think our GNA costs are across space, software, and uh, travel and how do you think we manage all the other costs. So we are looking at all the possible levers and how do we really look at a better optimization plan for the H2. And most of the levers are close to getting optimized and we have a couple of them which are being worked upon during H2 as well. Okay, okay. And just a related question on a strategy side, uh, do you believe uh, we have to have some rebalancing on the portfolio uh, to actually have a better growth outlook uh, in FY22? Because aerospace and defense may continue to remain weak uh, beyond FY21. In that scenario, are you confident to say that the rest of the uh, segments will have a lot of growth visibility which will help you to compensate any kind of a softer growth or the headwinds from the aerospace and defense. Yeah, I think we are definitely looking at as part of our structuring for H2 uh, and the uh, fiscal 22 uh, ahead. We are definitely planning for uh, looking at some sectors which can accelerate our growth and also bringing focus on digital and I think that's definitely being in the plan and also making sure we have just announced an acquisition of IG Partners. Once that gets consumed, we hope that can drive us growth in the mining sector. 
so we have seen some green shoots on sub vertical level not necessarily at the broad vertical level and focused on sub verticals which can give us growth probably in the next 18 months and how do you think we are really able to focus on those sub verticals for growth and if i can just add to that i'll say that you know the focus also is to bring some new uh, uh, sectors and skills into play for example if you look at it there were certain uh, areas of the engineering spectrum that we want focused on process engineering uh, automotive uh, and so on so forth uh, we also have a in the new structure we also have a play to focus on those areas again i would say that it's not the uh, traditional automotive um, mechanical engineering kind of work because that is something that is quite commoditized but we believe that with things like uh, electrification and uh, uh, autonomous driving and those kind of things happening we have a horizontal play into some of the new markets and actually we are seeing uh, uh, the the first uh, wins in those areas also so we have to compensate for aerospace i think that's just the reality we face but i think we've also put in over the last 9 to 12 months and especially in the last 6 months we've really put in a lot more focus on some of the new areas so i think uh, uh, <clears throat> there's three elements right one is we have to make sure that the existing businesses continue to be stable uh, and our yeah, sorry that the businesses like aerospace continue to be stable uh, we start to look at growth opportunities in other other segments but also focus on new sectors so i think the combination of these three things and i'm also saying that now because we are starting to see some uh, good outcomes out of it uh, and therefore i think uh, combination of all these gives us that confidence okay okay and uh, just a question to ajay uh, this direct salary and related cost has gone down by more than 8% q on q so is it more to do from uh, on site to offshore as well as decline in the employee as a whole there was there are uh, uh, two or three things uh, one is i think the mix of sub contracting the sub contract uh, cost which is also uh, you know uh, so it's a combination between that direct uh, cost and uh, this cost and uh, second one is yes whatever you are seeing that uh, 150 you know i said half of that 300 to 350 basis point that reduction is coming mostly from this direct one and also some of it is also a function of some of the grants that we get in terms of the compensation in the various geographies that's almost about uh, 1% that's also accounted and netted off in the people cost so these are the three things okay so and uh, uh, the uh, last thing in terms of engineering r and d uh, whenever the slowdown hits uh, it is forced to get impacted and we perceive that uh, it's last to get recover so any any thoughts and negotiations with the client indicates that the decision making has started improving and client has started spending on the engineering r and d or it will take or come with a lag uh, post the enterprise it making decision making or digital adoption decision making actually going on yeah what i would say is that with copy care i would really say that it is driven by essentially their ability to extend uh, their cost i think that's one of the key priority for them second they are looking for new revenue stream and that's where we are seeing opportunities for our, ourselves we have talked about whether it is on 5g we have talked about something on uh, medical devices or on the rail transportation and most of the rail transportation customers they also prioritize what would give them cash in the short term so that their projects are also prioritized in line with that so we have started seeing some momentum because a lot of projects got prioritized which they will get cash in the near term so it is essentially driven by that but the broader the demand uh, expansion is going to be driven by stimulus how the infrastructure and uh, other areas would uh, pick up based on the stimulus growth and the economic recovery that is going to happen across automotive and the consumer areas we hope some of them would start showing up in uh, early fiscal 22 and that's something we are prepared for uh, uh, riding on the growth so thanks and all the best thank you the next question is from moe jain from anand rathi line par bane rahe the mohit jain's line seems to be on hold uh, we'll move to the next question the next question is from the line of uh, amit chandra from hdfc securities please go ahead yeah yes sir thanks for the opportunity so my question first question is related to the aerospace and defense vertical 
so you know we have seen that uh, around and there is steep decline there over the last four five quarters so just want to understand because we have high high client concentration there so whether the decline is mostly due to ram down in the large client or it has been broad based uh, you know uh, i'm not asking for this quarter but you know over the over the, like over the last one year and uh, you know as we are saying that in the next two quarter is going to you know stabilize and uh, you know the finalization of budgets are going to happen by the end of this year so are you expecting uh, you know the growth in this vertical to come through the existing clients or you are trying to add some other clients uh, in this vertical so this is my first uh, question and so second question is on the dlm side so now we are expecting higher growth in the dlm side so if you can you know throw some more light on what you know will be the ongoing strategy or you know strategy around dlm which is driving growth here so it is more of uh, say like uh, higher like contract manufacturing contracts uh, or uh, you know like uh, you know solution based contracts or it or it is like uh, you know driven by uh, these like medical devices or some like short term contract so i just want the long term you know like vision here in terms of dlm you know uh, what can be the scale and uh, uh, you know the current capital you know the the current capacity utilization in dlm and any investments that you have to you know have to make in the near future yeah. so i can uh, answer the dlm part first uh, i think uh, the uh, if you look at the growth in dlm and also its manifested in margin is because uh, a lot of the work that we're doing fits into the original strategy that we want to do engineering led um, high uh, complexity low volume kind of work and a lot of the business is really transforming into that i mean at the end of the day you know we have a very unique uh, uh, dlm business i you know there's a lot of contract manufacturing that's not what we do and uh, our customers don't come to us because uh, you know they we can make millions of parts for the cheap that's not uh, you know where our focus has been our focus has again been engineering led it's been where there is complexity where there is low volume and that's starting to pick up and that's manifested in the margins like it says ebit this quarter was 4.7% and it will only go up in the next coming quarters and if you look at uh, other sort of contract manufacturing businesses nobody would have margins like that which means that uh, you know the work that we're doing is quite unique and quite high end we'll continue to focus on that i think um, we've turned the corner in terms of how the whole business will play out over the next uh, few years or even next many years having said that at the same time i want to reiterate that our core business is a services business if you look at it uh, or, or sorry i'd say our core business is an engineering business uh, services solutions what have you but uh, if you look at <coughs> excuse me if you look at where we will continue to focus we'll focus where there is engineering led uh, growth that will give us manufacturing rather than just contract manufacturing so therefore um, we are quite bullish about this sector uh, it's taking 5 years to turn the corner but i think uh, we have turned the corner or at least as we're turning the corner and therefore it gives me a lot of confidence that we have a very unique uh, positioning and that will reflect going forward uh, the second thing the second part of the question is in terms of capacity um we have capacity to at least double that business before we make any significant capex there might be some ongoing capex in terms of um, you know some specialized equipment testers etc but nothing significant so we feel quite confident that we still have a lot of capacity that we can utilize and uh, leverage uh to the first part of your question on aerospace uh, it's been a decline across the sector uh if you look at uh, the uh, uh, we did a, a count with some of our customers their outsourcing spend has gone down by 60 65% uh, uh, across the board whereas uh, our revenue is down by 35% so the good news in all this is we've actually taken market share but the bad news is the decline has decline has been across the uh, sector because uh, you know the impact has been across the sector it's not a company specific thing i'll only say there uh, there is more defense related work or government spend related work there the decline has been less uh, it is purely commercial the decline has been a lot okay so thank you and the my last question would be you know on the on the you know salary cost or the or the this indirect cost so the you know fall in direct cost uh, is uh, you know also a function of uh, you know the in, the involuntary attrition that we had you know the last quarter so how has been the involuntary component in this quarter so whether the fall is also due to involuntary uh, you know attrition or uh, uh, we have seen that uh, you know fall significantly in this quarter 
and we are trying to work with them to see how do we really make it uh, interesting for them in terms of uh, decision making. We are confident that some of them would move between Q3 and Q4 and uh, we definitely want to uh, work towards increasing our last field in, in H2 as well as for Q3. Okay. Uh, last question from my side, Ajay. Uh, in terms of capex, you mentioned two to and a half percent of revenue uh, would be the capex on approximately sort of uh, four thousand crores kind of a base. So uh, it, it's kind of 90, 90 crores kind of a number you are hinting at for the annual. That's right. I said two and a half to three percent, depending on uh, you know which quarter and uh, which year. But uh, uh, earlier there was a concern that we were crossing that when we were investing in Hyderabad plant and all. That's why I just wanted to clarify two and a half to three percent. Uh, you are right. So first up, you have done seventy to sixty-nine crores kind of thing. That's your cash flow statement uh, inset. Because it also had uh, one off uh, some of the continued. Uh, uh, capex on Hyderabad, uh, the Hyderabad plant for DNN, which was about 20 crores. We had also acquired, uh, you know, uh, something in Germany in terms of uh, people acquisition, some assets acquisition. That was also there, which was another 15, 20 crores. So that's why the number was uh, high, which are one off. Okay, so basically you are hinting at 120 crores, and you in first half you have done 70 crores. Is what what how one one should read it, or you should see one first half is a lower number, and you will see similar number in second half. Yeah. I would say overall, I would look at a number of two and a half three percent for the full year. Okay, and, and would it, uh, specific details which will let you and to maybe we can take it offline. And would it come down dramatically in FY22, 23 kind of thing after this DLM and everything being there in FY21? See, I am saying that you know uh, when DLM and all came, it moved towards four, four and a half, five percent. Uh, so the norm is when we are uh, growing, we are setting up QEs and things like that. Uh, that's the bare minimum hardware, software that we need, and some of the other things that we need. But uh, I think we have to also see how this business model evolves. And yeah, this yeah. Be a for uh, reduction uh, once we finalize the you know uh, go forward strategy. So I would say that you know uh, I would still say two and a half to three percent with some uh, scope for further uh, reduction based on new ways of working. But work from home, if that thing stays for another maybe or, or you it, it becomes a structural change uh, that would reduce the capex intensity. Would it be a fair assumption? Yes, I think that is a fair assumption. Obviously, we have to also enable the associates when we are working on some policy to make them comfortable. Uh, but my, why don't you give us some time? I think we are thinking about the long term. Uh, maybe in the next six months, we will uh, finalize. So by the time we talk for uh, maybe the quarter four or the next year, we'll have more visibility. I'm just saying from pure common sense, whatever I'm saying, I need to have it, you know, in terms of the roadmap. And uh, would this uh, would this be December quarter would this be uh, would see some sort of extended furlough? Yeah, are you seeing any such kind of sign, or it's a normal kind of thing which you see every annual year? So every year we see uh, the normal situation, especially in uh, uh, you know North America where we have aerospace and defense, where we get uh, you know the gap between the billing days and the pay days of about uh, three days. Uh, uh, and uh, that's uh, where I don't think we are trying, still working on. Some are bridging the gap by overtime, other things. But I think that's uh, as usual, unless car is used to the way. No, I think we are still assessing would there be any difference this year. Yeah. We are not having any clear views on it uh, till now. So we'll probably get to know in the next one month how this quarter would pan out. We are really prepared to uh, see how do we minimize the impact for this quarter. Yeah. Uh, thanks. That's from my side. Wish you good luck for the next quarter. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mohit Jain from Anandati. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Can you hear me now? Yes, Mohit. Okay. First of all, extremely sorry for the previous failed attempts. There were some technical issues with the phone I couldn't resolve. So extremely sorry for that. Uh, no. I have two small questions, sir. Uh, one is on DLM outlook. Uh, you guys alluded to the fact that uh, DLM business, the composition of the business is changing a lot. Uh, and that is getting reflected into margins as well. Uh, so is there any uh, benefit you got because of this medical thing during the quarter? And should we assume a YOY seasonality in line with the past uh, on the DLA business? That is question number one. And second was on headcount. Uh, headcount has been coming off for quite some time, and now margins have gone up to a, to a reasonable level. 
should we assume uh, that going forward headcount would would remain stable more or less or do you still think some corrections are on the way so i'll, I'll answer the first one and then i'll ask uh, pass it to the second one but uh, on uh, blm you have, i mean it's it's a it's, we are seeing benefits both of uh, the uh, current situation because we have a fairly sizable uh, capability to manufacture medical devices and uh, that's also driving some good growth but uh, having said that we are also seeing good growth uh, across other sectors i mean even if you look at the aerospace sector for example uh, the blm in growth in aerospace has been quite uh, significant because the work that we've done in terms of transitioning some of the uh, products to manufacture over the last few quarters or even last few years in some cases are starting to uh, pick up so I'll say overall the dlm business is is looking uh, uh, reasonably good from that perspective there will always be seasonality in that business i think like i've been saying for the last couple of quarters it's something that we just have to deal with and uh, we just have to make sure that uh, you know we we manage ourselves within that uh, seasonality so there will be seasonality healthcare is helping us at the moment but i'll say it's not just uh, driven by healthcare it's also other sectors like aerospace and defense for example have caught on quite a bit in uh, dlm on uh, headcount project yeah, i'm sure uh, thanks for coming and i'll also add on the dlm part and we are also seeing growth coming essentially from and and medical but we are also wanting to see how do we take it across the and you and uh, the transport vertical as well on the headcount uh, what i would say is uh, more it's, uh, it's a combination of two or three things and as krishna said even in q2 we have added about 270 people so we will continue to look for the right skill and if that is available internally how do we maximize it and if we don't find that skill how do we get it from outside so it's a combination of both internal as well as external that we will look for second we are also clear on certain operating metrics because we still have some headroom to improve in terms of utilization and we want to bring in automation as a key uh, driver of uh, productivity and how do we think we are able to leverage that and third the nature of growth that we are likely to see and how do we think we are able to manage it and if that requires us to hire draft people permanently versus uh, managing some short burst and we are also open uh, in terms of uh, pending and draft labor that we need to bring on board so we are looking at all combination of uh, uh, levers that we have and uh, we will see some uh, stability in terms of our account in q3 and maybe by q4 it starts picking up as the growth picks up Okay, and lastly, sir, in terms of margins, you said Q4 should be similar to uh, last year's Q4 or or Q2. I missed that point actually. We said uh, that you know uh, that uh, we have delivered 11% margin in this particular quarter. There are few headwinds uh, because of the wage correction and the uh, capacity constraint, which is the gap between the pay days and the bill days in quarter three. But quarter four, at least, we should be able to get back to the QT margin of 11%. Perfect, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from Sandeep Agarwal from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Hi. Thanks for taking my question, and I wish good health to everyone. Uh, so I have only one question, Krishna. That if you see uh, uh, our segment, and I, I know one of the earlier questions, the gentleman also asked the question that. we have good exposure to aerospace and defense and that industry is going to take a lot of time probably to recover and i don't know in energy what is happening because earlier because of the oil situation it was also weak and we in fact saw in this quarter also it was almost flattish and has not recovered strongly so uh, will will the growth which will be there in fy22 more of a base effect where you know and sharp decline Uh, and from there we only recover that is the key reason of recovery you would think or you believe inherently there will be strength in lot of segments that is number 1 and number 2 uh, you are uh, you are also announcing wage hike in line with the industry from 1st october so how do we read that that you are uh, expecting some kind of strong momentum from here or uh, you are just doing it in line with the industry practice No, I think uh, you know one is uh, there is going to be a base effect, and therefore the recovery will be uh, based on the base effect. Like I was saying, you know, we're we're the way that we're looking at it is the aerospace business is a lower base business, and we need to now take that into cognizance and grow from there. The rest of the industries we will actually recover, and and you know, if you look at places like uh, communications and transportation, they will have their best quarters ever within the uh, within the. Uh, 
uh, within the next couple of quarters. So I think it's a bit of both in that uh, sense. Uh, in, in most of the businesses, we just, I think, we're well positioned. Uh, we will uh, recover or to back to the best levels, whereas in uh, A&D, we just have to take a new uh, base in time. Now, uh, in terms of the uh, salary hikes also, I'd say it's in line with the market. We won't do anything uh, different or extraordinary, but I think there are some um, reasons why we need to do that, and therefore we will do it with the uh, broad market or in line with the broad market. Also, uh, one quick question to Ajay. Uh, Ajay, sir, uh, how do you see, and I'm not asking for any specific number, but how do you see uh, margins to evolve over next year? As a full year, means you see uh, this was the worst year for the margins, or uh, you would not be able to comment right now? So I would say that, you know, uh, uh, yes, uh, Sandeep, uh, that, you know, from the perspective of uh, you know, we are very happy where we are uh, currently, despite the revenue challenges, you know, we have demonstrated our ability to, uh, you know, do the right cost structure and some of the things that we have done are very much sustainable. So, I think our exit quarter of uh, quarter four uh, is something that should be uh, uh, definitely sustainable, uh, structural changes in terms of, uh, you know, some of the metrics. And then going forward, once the volume also picks up, uh, uh, then I think uh, we are uh, uh, in a good uh, uh, this thing. Now, how much will be the margin for the next year? I think it's a little, uh, little, uh, little early nowadays, you know, predicting beyond six months is really difficult, to be honest with you. One final question, if I can squeeze, is that uh, we have a huge cash balance now, and uh, uh, will it not be a little prudent that, you know, we stabilize all our equations which have been done till now, and we had tough time with DLM in the past, so we stabilized everything for a year or two, and probably you know a better use of this cash could be uh, uh, probably returning them to investors. Or you think that the opportunity right now is much better to acquire assets which are available cheaper because of the disruption? I think uh, we will do it prudently, but I think uh, not just because it's cheaper because of the acquisition. I think it's also because. You know, we've had a rough uh, couple of quarters. You know, we've stabilized the business. There is a huge opportunity to grow the business. So, like I said, I'm not necessarily looking just for value. I'm looking for a good uh, opportunity, and I think there is a good opportunity now. So, in that context, I mean, if it, if if we will always be prudent. If we don't think we can deliver the returns that uh, uh, justify putting the money, we won't do it. But I think at this point, at least, there is an opportunity to do that in a good way. Thank you very much. We'll take that as the last question. I would now like to hand the conference back to the management team for closing comments. Thank you very much. So thank you for uh, joining. I know it's a little bit late uh, these days with all the virtual board meetings, etc. But uh, thank you very much for joining. Uh, as you saw, there's uh, a fair degree of stability returning to the business. We're also trying to prudently manage to, uh, for the next couple of quarters at least. I think the opportunities are in front of us. but. Uh, we also have to be careful that we don't uh, over over exert ourselves or overcommit or um, um, set an irrational expectation of how we can uh, avail those opportunities. But I just want to assure you that uh, the business is is, is looking quite uh, good, uh, quite stable from where uh, things started off on March 23rd. Uh, and uh, I'll say thank you very much for your support. And uh, I think. Uh, Many of you have uh, uh, interacted with us through the thick and thin, and I want to assure you that uh, we are now starting to enter a patch where we believe that the business will come back to the uh, good quarters that we had a couple of uh, years ago. Uh, we also will have an investor update call. Uh, we did not do the investor day this year, given that it was supposed to be done in May, and that's when the uh, peak of the uncertainty was. So. Um, uh, sorry. So therefore, I, uh, we will do an investor update call, uh, which will be a few hours long. Uh, we are planning to do it in uh, either late November or early December. We'll send you the uh, information on that, but please do look out for that. And uh, once again, thank you very much for joining the call, but more importantly, thank you for your support. And uh, look forward to speaking to you during the quarter, or if not, uh, uh, at uh, the next call in uh, January. Thank you very much, and have a good evening. Thank you very much. On behalf Thank of Scient, that concludes the conference. Thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. You are now listening to Lines.